Hello and my greetings to everyone. So our today's topic is going to be based on comparing between concave and convex lenses and also to prove moving from center of curvature to the pole of the lenses. Okay, so first I will be explaining what concave and convex lenses are and then we will move on the main part of our today's topic. So first I will enlighten you with a time lapse of me drawing convex and concave lenses. Okay, so let's go ahead. Okay, so let's take a look at this. First of all, what is lens? As you see here, I have taken two examples. So what I have done is I drew a glass of slab here and then I cut out something like this and also I cut out something like this. So between these two spheres, spheres there is something left over that is this. So this is called as a convex lens. So here, as you see, this is a convex lens. So what exactly is going on with convex lens? It is bulging outside. You see here, they are bulging outside. And also there's another type of lens that is called concave lens. So I have taken the same example. I drew a glass of slab and then I cut out something like this, the same with the other side that is like this. So these are the two spheres. And between them, the surface like this is called as concave lens. So concave lens, are curving inside so when it curves inside it's called as concave lens so this is the two lenses that we are going to talk specifically about in our topic today so as you see here uh, as I explained these two lenses they are transparent material so a transparent material when the light rays goes through it we can still see them okay so I made it look easier as this and I, uh, I draw them like this, that the two spheres together and between them, there is something called as a lens. So this is a convex lens. And as we go to here, this surface right here is the concave lens. So here it is curving inside and here it's bulging outside. Okay, so it is bound by the two surfaces. At least one of the surface has to be spherical. So for convex both of these spheres have a center so both of these spheres they have a center so the center of the spheres here whose part this lens is they are called as the center of curvature so this is called a center of curvature the same goes with the concave lens the spheres have a center which is this and goes the same as this this sphere has a center this is called as the center of the curvature and also there's an exact point between, between this lens where we go y-axis and then x-axis. There's an exact center. So that center right here, this is called as optical center. So the center right here is the optical center. The same thing goes with the concave lens. So in concave lens, the center right here is optical center. And here as well, this is optical center. And then the line, the line that passes through the center of curvature and the optical center, which is this, this is called as principal focus. This is principal focus, this line. The same thing goes with this. This is principal focus, this line that passes through it. 
Okay, so as we learn about the lenses, we are going to go through a small diagram that is going to be showing how the light rays can pass through a convex lens and a concave lens in a better way. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we have two different kinds of lenses right here. So as you see here, this is a convex lens. It is bulging outside. So we know from the bulging that this will be convex lens. Whereas in concave lens, this is curving inside. So when it curves inside, it will be a concave lens. So in the convex lens, the, the, this is thicker at the middle. So the rays of light, when it passes through the lens, they are brought closer together, as you see in here, and it's called as converging. So when the rays comes through this lens, it will converge directly at a point called focus. So when the parallel rays of light, they pass through a convex lens, the refracted rays, they converge at the focal point. So this image will be formed as magnified and can be used as a lens magnifier if we go through a ray diagram of this. Now let's take a look at concave lens. So in concave lens, they are thinner at the middle. It's curving inside. So the rays of light that passes through the lens, they are spread out like this. So when they spread, the rays comes first from the lens and then they spread. And by, by spreading, it's called as diverging. So when the parallel rays of light passes through a concave lens, the refracted rays they diverge and they will appear to come from one point that is the principal uh, focus. So the image will, that was going to be formed will be diminished and it will be a negative lens. So here's the three rules that we have to follow in order for our image to be formed when we draw our ray diagram. So in here we have two different lenses. There is convex lens and there's also concave lens. So the rules here explains what image will be formed after we draw them. So the first ray in here, the first rule is that the first ray of light uh, is the incident ray that is parallel to the principal axis, then it's refracted, passing through the focus, that is F2. The second rule, the second rule for convex says that the ray of light is passing straight through the optical center, and it passes through the optical center that is undeviated. Then the third rule, which is the last rule for convex, it says that the incident ray is passing through the focus F1 and the refracted ray that's, that is already passed will be passed parallel to the principal axis. So these are the three types of rays in order for us to, to be able to draw a correct ray diagram. So we have to follow the convex rules in order to make it correct for the ray diagram. So now that we talked about convex, we will explain concave later. And now let's get with some ray diagrams of convex. Let's go. I just want to stay in the sun where I find. I know it's hard sometimes. Pieces of peace in the sun's peace of mind. I know it's hard sometimes. Yeah, I think about the end just way too much. But it's fun to fantasize. All my enemies who wouldn't wish who I was Okay, so after learning the three rules of convex lens, now we have to be able to draw our convex ray diagram and by that our image will be formed properly. Okay, so first I measured my diagram by keeping two centimeters off between the optical center and F1 and from F1 to F2 to F1. So there's two centimeters distance between them. And I did the same thing with the other side in here. So in here we will have the first rule of ray of light that is going to be parallel. So what I did here is that I drew, I, I brought my object to be at 2F1 
and the rays of light is parallel to the principal axis and after the refraction as you see here it passes through the focus of the lens and from the secondary that is here we can use the second rule that the rays will pass through the optical center and will go straight through it that is undeviated so as you see here the properties of our image is going to be at 2 f1 this is our object and our image is formed as 2 f2 so the properties of our image uh, is going to be that they will have the same height so this will be the same the, this will be the first property and the second property is going to be that they will be real and inverted this is the second property and the third property is that uh, no it's actually like this as you see the image will be formed at 2f2 while we drew it or actually put our object at 2f1 so why is it a real image because it's formed by the intersection of the rays so it will be as a real and inverted image so this is our first diagram of object at 2f1 now let's have a look at that is this so as you see here we have our case in here so the object is between f1 and 2f1 so it's between 2f1 and f1 this is our object so our image here is formed as well as a real and inverted magnified image it's going to be beyond 2f2 so what happening here is that the ray the light rays they are going parallel to the principal axis and then straight to f2 the same thing in here it's the second rule the secondary uh, light ray that passes straight through the focal point optical sorry optical center and it will go right here that will be beyond 2f1 so our image or our prop our image property is going to be real and inverted and it's going to be also magnified because our image is going to be magnified overall it will be beyond 2f1 and here's the diagram so this is our second case of convex lens that is between 2f1 and f1 now let's look at so as you see in here our object was between f1 and optical center so first the first rule says that when the object is going up the top of the object has to be going through this through the principal axis and parallel to the focus so it goes straight like this to focus the secondary light ray that goes from here straight to the optical center and as you see here our image is formed backwards and it is magnified so our image here is magnified now let's look at the properties of our image in here so the properties of our image is first virtual and erected and it is also magnified so our image is magnified right here and it's magnified behind the object so this was our convex lens that is diverging right here as you see the rays are diverging so this is our convex lens now let's look at our other rule for concave lens okay so this is our concave lens and this is the three rules so we discussed first about our convex lens and we understood the three rules now this time we are going to have a look at our concave lens so as you see in this first rule a ray of light which is parallel to the principal axis after refraction it appears to be coming from the focus so it comes from the focus and it goes over like this now the second rule so the second rule is saying that a ray of light is going towards the optical center of a concave lens and it goes straight through and it will, it will be deviated now in our third rule it is saying 
that a ray of light that goes towards the focus in here and after the refraction it comes parallel to the principal axis see this is the principal axis and it goes parallel like this okay so as we discussed about the three rules of concave and convex lens this time we're going to do the three rules on our concave lens but before that as I said, we have to only use two rules in order to make our image form properly. Okay, so in this ray diagram, I drew a concave lens. And as you see, the principal focus, or sorry, the principal axis goes straight like this. And in between, there is concave lens. So concave lens, it curves inside. So for the measurements, we did the same thing as with our previous ray diagrams, so as you see from the optical center to F2, there is a distance of two centimeters. And as we go from F2 to 2F2, there is also two centimeters. It's the same thing with the other side. So as you see, our object is placed beyond 2F2 right here. So the object goes up and we will use the first rule. So the first rule says that it will be parallel to the principal axis. And after the refraction, if we extend the refracted ray backwards, it appears to come from our uh, focus. And for the second ray that is this, we use the second rule. So the second rule says the ray goes through the optical center without being deviated. So since they are diverging, we have to look backwards. So as you, as you see, the image is formed right here. So this is the image. It's between F2 and the optical center. So the properties of this image is going to be, first of all, it's virtual and upright because it's diverging. Virtual and upright, okay? And the second uh, property is it's diminished. It is diminished. And the third is it is formed between the object and lens. So you see here, so this is our first case of concave lens. Now there's also another case, which is, so this case is the second case. So as the following, we use the same measurement, two centimeters, two centimeters, but this time our object is going to be placed between two F2 and F2. So this is our object and it's going to be placed between these two. So as you see, this lens, it has the same properties. It's the image is formed right here. Even though we move from two F2 beyond two F2, and we move between these two lines, still we have the same image that is formed. So every time with concave lens, it will always diverge and form the same thing. But remember, convex lens had many different cases that is based on their location of the objects. But for concave, as far as we go, we get the same image. So here it has the same properties as our previous one. It's virtual and erect. It is no, sorry, it's virtual and upright, and it is diminished, and it's formed between the F2 and the lens optical center. Now that we have reached to the end of this video, I'm going to talk about the fun fact or the CCL of today's lesson. So I'm going to relate this to the lenses that we studied about, and for that, I will say that the correction of common vision detects that is myopia and hyperopia so for myopia we usually use the eye lenses that is called concave lenses to correct the people who are nearsighted and for hyperopia the people who are farsighted they usually use convex lenses in order to correct their eyes thank you